Welcome back to the channel everyone. So today I'm gonna be showing you what Tiki Taka is. Tiki Taka is a possession based style of play that revolves around switching the ball from player to player via short passing, which builds up to become a more possession based tactic. Tiki Taka revolves around the circulation of the ball from player to player. How do you be successful with Tiki Taka? Well, since it's a possession based tactic, the main idea is to draw the opponents from their side all the way to your side for you to have a numerical advantage. Because of the high pass volume that happens during Tiki Taka, you have to know when and where to pass. So for instance, you don't want to pass to someone who has two or more people on them. Instead, you want to look for more open players on your team that will either draw the enemies in or further your own attacking plays. Since Tiki Taka is a possession based tactic, when your team loses the ball, the entire team has to press to get the ball back as your entire attack revolves around keeping the ball and keeping possession to actually create overloads and overlapping scenarios where you can pass the ball around and put your shape up. However, this press has to be able to choke the opponent successfully when they get possession of the ball immediately because this is when they're the most liable to actually messing up. If the press is performed properly, then you're going to win back the ball on their side, thus leading for you to play around with your Tiki Taka strategy and move the ball around the pitch faster than they can recover before leading for more goals. The second that you lose the ball, your entire team must press just like that. Another prerequisite that you must have before using the Tiki Taka tactic is that your team must have a false nine. A false nine is a striker that drops back into the midfield position when he's being marked, so then it leaves the defenders that have been marking him with a dilemma. If they were to follow him, then they'd leave a space open in their defensive position. But if they were to leave him, then that means that there's an open space in the midfield position that's leading for overlapping potential for your team. As shown here, if the defender comes down to mark his man over here, that leaves a lot of space over here for our team to come in and utilize. However, if he doesn't decide to mark his man over here, then that leaves the midfield to be open, therefore allowing us to play in the midfield as much as we need to. This also creates a dilemma on the midfielders on their team because they're gonna have to split up and decide who's gonna cover the open space. Thus also leaving open gaps in their attacking midfielder positions. Another criteria that must be met is that the entirety of the team understands what positional play is. Positional play refers to the field being divided into zones. And in these zones, there should not be more than two people at a time permitted in each one of these areas. So let's say we have a right back and a left back on the team. There should never be the right back and the left back in the same zone. Instead, our left back and our right back stay on their respective zones. So as you can see here, the left back will never be in the center of the pitch the same way that the right back will. This allows for Tiki Taka to be played. The entire premise of dividing the pitch into zones is so it encourages players to make runs and to find passes that players are open that will increase the chances of our attack working out, which the zonal type of play does perfectly and allows players to develop naturally instead of forcing it. So another thing with Tiki Taka is that the players are constantly on the move and they're always rotating around looking for open spaces to either receive passes or to make offensive runs. It's incredibly important to have people who can communicate very well on the team. As to conserve your shape. I don't know why I said it that way, but that's okay. Anyway, some of the pros of this tactic is that you can pass the ball way faster than you can run after it, therefore making it a tactical advantage to even pass the ball around, as the defenders on the other team will most likely not be able to catch your passes if you play them properly. So therefore, if the players that are on your team are actually moving around properly, it's near impossible to intercept any of the passes and it creates for very good attacking opportunities for your team while also keeping the shape because all the players have to move up in unison. So if you're a defender, then this part of the video is for you. How can you employ Tiki Taka tactic just with your defensive line alone? Well, to actually be able to do this, it's pretty simple. You just have to pass a lot with the goalie and the defenders on your line. Make sure that you're switching the ball a lot and make sure that your passes are quick and you're not taking too much time to touch and look up for passes. When you do this correctly, this will allow your team to make more space on their side because the attackers that are usually congesting their side will come to yours. If you're a midfielder, however, it's a little bit more complex. You have to be able to pass in every single direction and you have to have 
very quick thinking skills. I'd move the attackers. If you're an attacker and using this tactic, then you only have to worry about passing to the midfielders, and at the very worst scenario, all you have to do is clear all the way back to your half, and hopefully it'll work out. So there you go, guys. That's how to do Tiki Taka in a nutshell. This has been Coach Gabriel, signing out.